Yes, what happens now? <laughs> what happens now? Well, Alan, you surprised a few people today. What was your assessment today? Well, firstly, I'm really proud of my people. Um, I just thought when they get, when they're given a chance to play rugby, they played rugby. But um, if that's the way you grow the game, then it's most probably a good thing I'm not in it. Um, I just I just found the whole thing astonishing. Uh, that it's a barbarian's game and you're playing with 13 men and it's like kept blowing the whistle. I think it was 16 penalties to four or something. So we're four times more disciplined than the other side. I mean, the, the bloke was clearly out of his depth. I, I, thank God I'm out of the game. But if Michael Check has got to deal with this sort of stuff all the time, it's one reason at the gap. Uh, how do you how do you how do you encourage? We we tried to play football, and um, and we did some good football. But before the game started. Quaid and I and the colours thought as a courtesy we'll say to the referee in the room, we didn't want him to do any, any favours, but we explained that it is the Barbarians and we're playing a funny couple of, we had a couple of free kick moves up our sleeve and one of them you saw and I explained to him that we knew the laws and the people had to have their foot behind the ball and all the rest of it. That's, they duly scored the try and he disallowed it, disallowed the try. I mean, look, it's very disappointing, but I, I'll tell you something. I mean, OK, you can brand me as a whinger or whatever you like. I'm, I'm doing all this for nothing. I'm doing it because I believe in the game. That's why we're at Casual Arena Rugby Club. That's why we're at Lismore. I've spoken at about eight functions for nothing in the last God knows how many days in order to grow the game. That was all we're trying to do. And you're telling me that's how you grow the game? When people in the grandstand start booing what they see, they're not stupid, they know. It is extraordinary. And then the young man is the captain is sent off. Just so all I'm saying is that the, the rugby has a problem. We've seen evidence of that this week in that there's not been any communication with us at all of any kind or with the barbarians from the Australian Rugby Union, none whatever. Uh, and that's a discourtesy to the barbarian officialdom who are here. No one has spoken to them. Um, the, the, the Australian Rugby Union got $1.6 million for this game. And and they've given absolutely nothing back. We're in, we're in a terrible state administratively, not player-wise. Michael Checker, I've said a thousand times, is doing a very, very good job against the odds. But, you know, you can't grow the game. People, are those people going to come back? I mean, you should have been out where I was, in the middle of the, stand, middle of the oval there at the end. I couldn't get out of the joint. That's all they were talking about. So, you know, that's the problem, and that's why I gave my time uh, this week for it. I don't regret that. I was delighted this young man could be the captain. He's just an outstanding player of multiple gifts and we saw that today. Um, directed the traffic but when we got the chance to play football we played it and we, we played as the support game and some of the stuff was terrific but we, come out, we came up short because um, we couldn't get the football. So to that extent for rugby it means nothing to me. What, it's got nothing to do with me. I'm just concerned about the game of rugby. How do you grow it? I had to speak yesterday at a luncheon about the spirit of rugby. Is that the spirit of rugby that you saw out there? I don't know. You work it out for yourself. Not in my terms. And I see people in the media here who were with me years and years ago, Greg and others. They know what the spirit of rugby is. That ain't it there. And, and it disillusions young people like this and others. They think, what, what is this about? Why is the referee asking at the 55th minute how many panels you've been? What's that about? I don't know. Michael tells me, I just spoke to Michael Check. He said that goes on all the time now. Referee, well, someone's got to grab this game by the throat and say, there's got to be other ways of doing it. But I hope that we've done something for the game. I'm not sure that we've done very much. But the satisfaction for me comes that I've met 23 people for a couple of days and uh, we tried to get in up here, change the philosophy of the game, change the way we played, and they responded magnificently in four training sessions. And today I saw stuff that was as good as anything in any team that I've ever been identified with. And I know they're excited about that. They might be disappointed about the result, but they're, they're pretty excited about the execution. Where, where is the, uh, the game heading, Alan? If these changes aren't made that you're talking about, where is the game heading? Sorry, what was the question? Where is the game heading? Where is it heading? South. 
South. I mean, I, you, I talked to you about this the other day. I spoke at a function last Friday in Brisbane, and I repeat, and there was this young man who was a fundraiser, and uh, there was this young man who um, had been a coach of Queensland. He got the chop. I don't think he should have got the chop, but he got the chop because all the people appointing coaches have never coached in their lives. And I've used the expression, and I've said, you know, just imagine someone from the Sydney Symphony Orchestra ringing me up on Monday and saying, Alex, it's Lyndon Terracini here. I'm the conductor of the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. I'm auditioning on Monday for a first violinist. Could you come along and give us some advice? And I said, well, hang on, I've never played the violin. Well, that's what we're doing here. We're saying who's going to coach, but they've never coached. What well, do they know? What are the criteria for appointing somebody? So this young man was telling me that at Brisbane Grammar, which used to be a factory, they'd have five players out of 15, uh, out of the 15 in the Australian schoolboys, and now he's telling me that there are 850 kids playing soccer, 550 kids playing basketball, and 320 playing rugby. You can't, unless we grow this thing down here. Now, that, that oval out there today was full of kids. Full of kids. And they see their hero. I still don't know. I haven't talked to Quaid. I don't know what the hell he was sent off for. I saw the bloke with his hand in his pocket. He couldn't wait to get his hand in his pocket. Send off Quaid Cooper. I hope that gives him hairs on his chest. But it, it didn't do anything for the people who are here. But is there any sanction? Is he accountable? Or does he have to explain why he awarded, why the barbarians were four times more undisciplined than the other side? You, you just shake your head. I just said to Michael, thank God I know you're entitled to the referee going your way because on many occasions he's been a guinea. But uh, where's the game going? You, you, you see more of it than I do. But I um, don't know. Not while you've got the kind of people running the game that are running it now. That you can't make a courtesy phone call to the leadership of the barbarians here or say, can we have a drink? And you can't print a program? And then they say, well, it's a home game. It wasn't a home game for us. Why do they have the home dressing room? Australia took the home dressing room. And how do these blokes feel? They've come from all over the world. Two blokes braved a typhoon in Japan to come here and play. We had a young fellow in the, as Quaid knows, in the hotel on, what, Friday, wasn't it? Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Desperate to play, wanted to play. Prominent, very prominent uh, loose head. And he was there. We had the hotel room for him. And he it doesn't get a clearance. So you've got to go to an agent. You've got to go to the coach. You've got to the club. The bloke wants to play the game. What the hell is this all about? I, it's, thank God I, I've been out of it for 100 years. I, it seems as I've landed on another planet. But unless someone addresses this stuff, they can say, oh, well, what would Jones know? Perhaps I don't know anything. You know, coached a couple of teams in time. And I, I have an idea of what I think the game can do and how we can grow it and how exciting it can be. And the one gratifying feature is that I think, I hope I'm not presuming to speak on behalf of all of them, but I haven't had a chance to go to the rescue. All these boys are thanking us so they've enjoyed a wonderful week because the first time they got to play with the football. Because I kept saying to him, I'm not telling you what to do. You make some decisions out there. You, you've got an awful load to bear today because you're the boss. Well, he made some pretty good decisions. Made some pretty good. Never been given the chance to do that. Do you think what? Do you think Quaid should be reported to the Royals? Well, look, every coach has a different view. He'd be in my team every time, but not, not in the structured, you know, I'm going to tell you how to play stuff. How can I tell him how to play? I don't know what he's going to see when he gets out there. But I had two young people helping me and who didn't really know Quade Cooper, and one of them was one of the finest players that's ever played for me, Brian Smith. Last night we were having a drink. He said, he's a, Quade Cooper's amazing. He said... You say something and he knows ten times more than you know. But I said, we've, we've never bothered to find out what he does know. We've never bothered to find out. Could he contribute to the an international side? Jeez, we've got to be pretty red outside it. There's no room for someone like this, but here we are. <laughs> Quite, what was the most pleasing aspect of uh, players that oh, mate, like, We definitely had fun. You know, we, we prepared all week on and off the field to have a good time, to go out there and, and play the rugby that... We hope that the fans, the people that paid the money to come and watch us play, would enjoy. And we felt that all game, you know, we were trying to play positively. We weren't lying on the ruck. We weren't trying to kill the ball and things like that. And we didn't really get rewarded for it. But in terms of, from a player's point of view, you know that you got these guys putting them together, and you know, some of them coming in late. Some guys coming in for a week from all over the world. You know, some guys travelling having jet lag. So the odds are always stacked against you. Are you just bind together as a team, and I think that that's what rugby is all about. You know, whether you're playing as a as a kid, 
professional, and I think that sometimes we lose sight of that, that it's all about um, yeah, a result, as opposed to you know, we, we can get some guys in off the back of a week. We don't need that long together, because I, I know that every time I've, I've played the game, just say we've come up short, you know, pre preparation is always something that um, is the first thing that's spoken about. But when you come together as a Barbarians team, the first thing you do is not get out in the, on the training paddock and, and start running drills, things like that. You get to know your teammates. You have fun, you spend time with your teammates. And I think that that is the best thing that I've been able to achieve out of this week, getting to know, you know people that I haven't necessarily spent time with. I've got a newfound respect for, for a lot of people on and off the field, the coaches a lot of time and spending with them, empowering us as, as people. And I think that when, when you get that, Look at the, the results that you got on the field. Some of the guys that probably, um, you know, journalists, some, some of the people sitting in the crowd would have no idea of, of who some of those players were, and they were amazing. And, you know, I'd love to see them you know, continue to play at a high level, um, but continue to enjoy it. And, you know, I had a great time. So, you know, if I get the opportunity to, to play again, you know, I love it. And um, you know, I look forward to just continuing to enjoy my rugby. I said to the boys at the beginning of the week, um, we're at a training session. I said, "Listen, if we're going to, there's an expectation about us. I don't know whether it was because I was the coach or whatever, but there was all this hoopla about me coming back and so on. And of course, people had some appreciation of the way we played the game all those years ago. And I said, we've got to honour that expectation. I said to the boys now, and I made the point, which is quite ironic. I said, well, if we're going to fall on the ground every time, and every time someone blows on you or spits on you, we go to the deck." They'll boo us in the stand. Well, they were booing, but they weren't booing us. They were certainly booing. You heard it. And that's, that's the legacy that the game has left, not the beautiful stuff that was done on the paddock. That's not a good start of the season, Alan. Alan, that people are booing the Wallabies. I beg your pardon? That's not a good start of the season, that people are booing the Wallabies. They weren't booing the Wallabies. They weren't booing the Wallabies. They were booing the referee when he sent this bloke off and the other fellow. As soon as they, they went booing the Wallabies, no one boos the Wallabies. Well, only if they're encouraged to sort of think the Wallabies are no good. Well, you've heard me express that view on that. No, the fact that they'd come to see 15 on... A referee's job, I used to say 30 years ago, was in rugby league and rugby union, the best referee, his job is to take 30 on and 30 off. How do you run the game so that you can do that? Now, in a Barbarians game, we had 15 on and... 15 versus 13, and they were booing. They weren't booing the Wallabies. They were booing the referee. Why do you understand why you were Well, I mean, he gave me a reason. Um, I've been saying that. Like, I, I said to him out on the field, I was literally, I didn't see Izzy because one of their players, Duncan, ran in front of me, and at the last minute, I seen Izzy pop up. The ball bounced up, and I tried to jump out of the way so we wouldn't have a, a big collision because we both didn't see each other. And we spoke, me and Izzy spoke on the field. I said, I, I tried to jump out of the way, and he said he did the same thing and saw me late. And again, you know, like I said to the ref, you know, I wasn't trying to hmm. make any contact with him in terms of especially anything malice. And I said, well, and he, he had an exp explanation for it, um, you know, which is you know, what, what, what he said to me, and then um, you know, that was it. But like I said, in, in terms of the game, like, we just wanted to go out and, and put a, a show on for everyone and things like that. Where no one was hurt, it was an accident and I explained that to him. Izzy was fine with it as well. Um, you know, it was a little bit of common sense. Alan, the upper jumper move, was that paying homage to Daryl Harbright today? <laughs> yes, I've, I've, um, I, I tried that when I was coaching the, one of the sides at Oxford University. Um, but part of the problem is that the referee doesn't see the football. So he gets quite duped and is not sure whether something's gone wrong and therefore blows the whistle and says no. But, I mean, we did speak to him in the, in the shed about that and, and he spoke, didn't we? I told him on the field. Yeah, and you told I him on the field. Yeah, I explained to him exactly what we were under. Yeah. And I told Quaid, have we arm with the referee on the field? And I, we just thought it was a bit of interesting stuff for the public, for the public but got us nowhere. Well, I said, we're doing a, a little um, a trick play. I said, 
Tim's going to tap it so you can see him because the ball was in the in the middle of the ruck. So I said, Tim, I gave Tim the ball. I said, he's going to tap it so you can watch him tap it. Um, so that everyone's on side. So that, exactly. Cause if Behind the ball. If anyone tap it, then mm. the, the play cannot go on. So, and when we ended up scoring the try, I just simply, he, he said it was unsportsmanlike, um, hiding the ball like that. And I said, when you play a move and you turn around and throw a dummy, you're hiding the ball. Like, it's, it's the same thing. We're just, it was, it was more just a bit of fun, you know? And like I said to him, could we have a, another go, uh, give us the, the scrum or whatever? And so it didn't work out, but it was, it was all fun. We enjoyed it. You know, we prepared for it during the week. We spoke to the ref about it before the game on the field. Um, you know, so it's unfortunate that it didn't, you know, it wasn't allowed to be a try. It was great that we scored from it. Um, you know, but we still had fun. You know, we were able to be creative throughout the week. Um, you know, take time to you know, come up with plays like that. We had, we had another play that we didn't get the opportunity to play. Um, you know, but in saying that, it was, it was still fun. You know, and I know that this will be a, a memory that I'll enjoy. I'll enjoy some of the people I've met, some of the plays, some of the things that we got to do today uh, for the rest of my, my career and my life. Scott, you mentioned a couple of those guys. You have to keep playing on at this level. Um, you know, there are a couple of guys there who are putting their hand up to Nasserani was, he was a handful all, all game, you know, as a, as a back row, he was, he was a freak. Obviously, Big T, um, playing in the centres, usually on the wing, he was, was, he was a handful all over the field. Um, someone like Tom Banks, um, you know, out on the wing there, I just showed that there's no real substitute for, for speed and, and a guy who understands the game you know, quite well. Um, you know, there was, well. There's a lot of guys in, in the fours that, that put their hands up. And I think it was just more you know, them being able to have confidence in, them, in their cell um, you know, to go out there and just front with some of the best players. And, um, um, yeah, I mean, like, like, again, I had fun. So I, I enjoyed myself out there. When you're enjoying yourself, then that's all you can ask for. And it was a... Like I said, throughout the week, you know, when I was asked if, if it was an audition for me, you know, for higher honours to you know, go on the spring tour, things like that, I said, no, I wasn't even thinking about that because I wasn't going to let something like, like that take away from the opportunity that I had to represent the Barbarians, um, go out there, meet some new guys, have a good time. And you know, I didn't want to take anything away you know, from my mind looking at, at something that's out of my control. Um, but I had fun and you know, I thought that the, the team played well. And if the team plays well, usually a number 10, you, you're going all right. Alan, would you look to get involved in something like this again? Maybe another fixture next year? How do you spell never? <laughs> with All with capital letters. No, that's, uh, that's the end of the section for me, I can assure you. No, but uh, look, uh, I just want to say that um, it's been an absolute privilege and pleasure to be identified with people, half of them I didn't know when we assembled. Some of them had alphabet names, which I couldn't sort of, <laughs> so I was very strong on the Christian names and their response and their enjoyment and their understanding that there is another way of playing the game, that the game is can be 15 men and you can play off one another, you can support the football in the air and you can still do it. Don't blame the laws of the game, you can still do it today and they did it today. You still have fun strapping back up into your coaching gear and <laughs> getting knocked over. Yeah. yeah, I got knocked over on Thursday and nearly killed me like a steam train. Like one bloke ran at me as I got in the road, bang, down I went. Any more? Any more? Is that it? Thank you very much.